A few years ago, I took a look at the Warplight VTX Play HD Zero, and at the time, this was the missing piece to my upcoming 1S build. Well, today's the day we're gonna start that build, and hopefully this video can give you some ideas when you're gonna consider doing your 1S build as well. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the parts here for our 1S digital build. Now, the first thing here is the heart and brain of any drone, and that's the flight controller. This is a beta FPV F4 flight controller. It can be powered by a 1, 2, 3S battery source. It has a 5 amp built-in ESC in there, and it also has an integrated receiver as well. This is an SPI Express LRS receiver in here. Now, this is a good balance between performance, lightweight, and price points. So that's the reason why we went with this one. Pretty cool, it also has a BT 2.0 connector on here, which is really good compared to your standard PH 2.0 connector. So this should be a really good, you know, flight controller for our drone. To the right, we have the motors. Now this is the Happy Model SE 802 motors. These are 16,000 KVs. These things are very, very tiny, but should be decent for any kind of 1S drone. Now for visual, obviously we're using HD0. We're going with the Nano Light camera and the Whoop Light VTX by HD0. Obviously this is an HD0 build. And this is gonna be the highlight of this whole drone. We're gonna have digital in a small 1S drone. And this should be pretty good for what we're trying to do. 200 milliwatts, low latency, consistent latency, this should be <laughs> really cool. This is probably the reason why you're watching this build in the first place. Next, we're coming down to probably the most subjective and probably the hardest decision for me, and that's which frame am I gonna go with. I'm gonna use the Tiny Hop 3 frame by Emacs. This thing is super light, guys. And the reason I went with this is because I really enjoy flying this drone when I flew it with the RTF kit. It was one of the smoothest, most nimble, I guess, drones I've flown. And this thing can accommodate numerous flight controllers and VTXs. Now I also have another frame here. This is the Meteor 65 frame by Beta FPV. This one here is a 65 millimeter, you know, frame here. And it's pretty nice. This one here has the pink color. You can get this in numerous colors. And this is also an option or a popular option for most 1S builds. Now coming to propellers, I'm using a Gemfan 40 millimeter propellers. These things are pretty good, decent. We'll see how it works on this application. Obviously, we're gonna be using this frame here, so we're gonna use it as a pusher configuration, so we have to consider that once we install these propellers. I have two different colors. I have a blue and I have a red one right here. So these are all the components and parts for this one that's built. It's very, very simple once you, you know, take this out of the picture. It's just three parts, a frame and some propellers. This should be hopefully a relatively simple build. So let's go to the workbench and get these parts installed. Okay, so we're here at the workbench. We have all of our parts here. We don't need the props for now and we don't need the motors. So let's get this frame out of the bag here and let's do a quick mock-up of the flight controller and the VTX. Make sure I have everything set up properly. And here's our first task is to find a place to mount this. I think I'm gonna mount this on top. I can mount it on the bottom as well. As you can see, these holes here match pretty nicely, guys. It works pretty good. This would be an option as well. But if I do do this, well, I might be able to put the, that's an option too. I might be able to put the VTX on top. So this is why we do this to see what makes the most sense. Oh, I know why this is gonna be a problem. If I put the battery holder in place here, it's not gonna work as you can see, even if I turn it left or right. It might be in our best interest to put it on top instead. So let's just flip this upside down. We may have to do some different changing in beta flight, but it looks like this is gonna be the better option. So let's get the VTX out of the box. This thing is so tiny and light, guys. Really cool option here by HD Zero. All right, so that looks good. Um, how can I hold this in place? I put some screws in there. All right. Okay, so it actually grabbed it, but yeah, that's not made for it to go on top of the canopy. So we'll have to put the one that came with the hardware kit. Let's try this VTX now and mock it up and see if that VTX does fit under here. All right. That looks pretty flush, like it was made to go in there. Now the battery's supposed to go forward to back lengthwise, so yeah, this should work pretty good. Let's see here, put that on there. Looking like a relatively clean build. All right, there it is, look at that. It holds the VTX in there, and it holds the flight control in there. Cool, that, that's the plan. It's good to mock it up and see if there's any issues, and that's the reason why I went with the Tiny Hawk 3 frame, because I saw that this hobby is gonna work better because I can mount a board below and a board on top opposed to the Meteor 65. I have to stack them on top. And then with this Express LRS antenna, then that creates some clearance issues with the VTX. So let's just disassemble this quickly. 
The whole, me personally, I just want this build to look as clean as possible, like it came from the factory that way. Now, having said that, I'm sure Emacs is gonna maybe build a <laughs> Tiny Hawk 3 with HD0 in there. I mean, they should. That seems like a smart decision to me. Okay, let's take a look at the box and see if there's any harness in here. There's usually a, a bunch of wires in here. And sure enough, I see some wires for the actual VTX. Okay, so before I start soldering these wires to my flight controller and VTX, I wanna do one thing here. I wanna update the firmware on this flight controller, both for two reasons. This thing is gonna be really hard to get to once I get this whole flight controller and VTX in here. And I wanna do all my flashing while it's out of the drone. So the first thing I wanna do is flash my passphrase to this board. So once I power up my radio, it's gonna connect automatically to my transmitter and receivers. The second thing is I wanna flash the latest version of Betaflight on my flight controller. Now, now when these boards first came out, they were flashed with a release candidate of Betaflight 4.3, which is pretty cool, but now we have the official version on there. Now the release candidate, specifically release candidate number six, has some issues that once you power this board up, it could damage your gyro or at least one axis of your gyro. So that's a really crucial step. For me, this is a brand spanking new flight controller. I haven't powered this up yet, but the issue arises once you power this up for the first time, whether it be the micro USB or the BT 2.0 connector on here. And that renders the Yaw gyro inoperable and you don't want that. So I'm gonna go to the computer right now, flash the latest version of Betaflight on here, and then I should be able to mount this in here and not worry about any of the configuration on this flight controller. So let's go do that. Okay, so we're here at the computer. I have my flight controller here. And what you wanna do here is press the boot button on the flight controller while plugging this into the computer. It shows it DFU, so we're good. We're in bootloader mode, which is good. And that should save this thing here. So I'm gonna show all stable releases, so don't check this out because I want only stable. And the target is the beta FPV F4 SX1280. So we're just gonna load the firmware from online, we're connected. Let's flash it. Erasing. Yeah, it's flashing it. That's a good step. Programming successful. Yeah, why not? All right, we're gonna do that. Um, let's see here, what's... All right, so I don't have anything on here. Open. Nothing crazy in here, which is good. Just gonna copy this right here. Paste. Enter. Pretty cool. Connect. And then presets quickly here and put this in here. HD0 VTX looks good. Click on that. Boom. I'm gonna use your one. Pick it. Agree. Save and reboot. That was quick. Cool. I'm just gonna put my passphrase in the CLI and we should be good to go. All right, so I went to the expresslrs.org and got my binding phrase right here. I just go back to my beta flight, connect this and go to my CLI. All right, paste, enter, and that saved it. So I should have everything good to go in here. Disconnect, our work here is done. Let's go back to the bench. Okay, so we're back to the workbench and we have our flight controller here flashed with the latest beta flight and also express LRS with my pass phrase or binding phrase on here. So once I power this up, this should automatically bind to my radio. I guess I could test it right now. I guess we can do it right here. All right, I one charging here. This is my first time powering this thing up. All right, I don't see it. Kind of weird, should have worked. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it works. Now, I just wanna put some tin on this so we can connect the wires for our VTX. I have my extra pair of hands here. And I need to just put tin on three pads, the SA, which is the smart audio, and then T1 and R1. That looks pretty good. It's a little bit more challenging, but we'll see what we can do here. 
Oh, I took it. These pads are tiny, guys. All right, I took that one. Whew. That was a lot of shaking and moving. All right, we got our TX RX right here. Looks good. Now we need to get the smart audio. Smart audio is over here. I already tinned it, and we're gonna use yellow for smart audio. All right. Next one is the five volt and the ground. So I'm gonna use obviously the red and black. Now this is a 1S VTX. Now there's a lot of good instruction on the HD0 website how to connect these things. This is gonna be a 1S build, so I don't intend to use any batteries more than 1S. So it doesn't really require a capacitor or a BEC. But if you're gonna wire this to a 3, a 3S drone, then you might wanna consider a capacitor or a BEC. Now, along with that, this flight controller also has a five volt pad on there. Um, so you could wire this to a five volt pad, but I've seen a lot of stories where these, not this controller or flight controller specifically, but controllers in general, may not have enough ample current to run these things. So if you are gonna use this in a 1S build, you could connect this straight to the connector, battery connector for the flight controller. Um, that's gonna give you more consistent power. But the one thing you have to notice though, guys, if you do connect this straight to this, it's gonna be unregulated. So if you do a strong power loop or go maximum power on the throttle, typically batteries tend to sag. And if it sags below a certain voltage, I think in this case, 2.8 volts, you could lose visuals um, from your VTX. So that's the one benefit in going straight to the five volt pad on here. All right, let's try the red first. No, it connected. Hmm, that's pretty good. With that said, everything is in here. Let's get all these wires through the frame. All right. All right, that looks a little bit better. That looks a little bit cleaner. What do you think, guys? Yeah, it looks okay. Now we gotta put some tin on the actual VTX. They have these grooves in here, you can wire this thing vertically and it, it might be cleaner that way. better and smart audio that looks pretty good move that we're done with this for now all right guys you can see it's all in there make it a little bit brighter so we can take a look at that it's all in there what I want to do here is put the MIPI cable on here the antenna is also need to be installed. That's a short antenna. All right, so there goes the antenna. Line this up, don't want to damage that. All right, it actually took it. That's a tight build, guys, whew. All right, so now we have this out. I can now properly install this. Put these grommets in here. Here we are. Okay, let's try this. We're making some progress. All right, there it is. All right, this is the front, the more complicated part of the build right here. It fits, but. All right, let's put these grommets in here and the flight controller and see if we can get it to work. All right, twist this a little bit. Still a little. Can I bend these as well? Just one out. Ah, I just broke one. Shit. One of the pads came off and it is not repairable. It's not solderable. You can't solder this back on here. That pad came off. That This is done. I'm gonna um, snip it. It's done. 
Well, it's the RX though, so I might be able to still get telemetry from it. Flight control is in. All right, next thing is the motors. That's gonna be fun. Oh, I might have to trim. I have to trim this a little bit right here. I have a, uh, this is not a required tool, obviously. Why don't I have this plugged in? This to the side. It's kind of a little cheating though, because I want this to be like a plug and play kind of thing where you didn't really need any tools or anything to make this work. All right, I'm content with this, guys. Let's do the motors. All right, so here we are. I'm guessing we have clockwise and counterclockwise. Right, but anyways, here's our motors here, Happy Model Motors. The plan here is just to install this. Hopefully, I don't have to modify the top. Red is clockwise, so they're gonna spin this way. There's no markings on them, but these little screws and stuff, this is a pain in the butt. I don't know how you guys build these little micros. I think the way they do it is that they pass these motor wires through here. But for right now, I just want to get one or two in. <laughs> these things are so tiny. It requires every little bit of concentration. If you lose a bolt or something, you're screwed. No pun intended. No. We'll see how the motor's working beta flight if they're all in the right direction. We don't know yet, but we can change that, especially if this thing has beta flight 4.3 on here. Two more screws, guys. Two more screws. Perfect. So here's our drone. We have all the motor wires through. We're just gonna plug them in, and I don't know if this canopy, I'm hoping this canopy can still go over it once I put the plugs on there. This is the cool part about this, is it's kind of like a plug and play kind of application. All right, that looks pretty good actually. They're all in there. And let's do one more test fit of the canopy, make sure that it can stay in there. Actually, this can go through here. This, these two are gonna go through the top. And what, no, if it's okay. You know what, I can trim it. I think I will trim it. So the plugs are rubbing a little bit against the sides here. And uh, I could use my Dremel to get that open up a little bit. I think that's what I'll do. So I just finished reshaping this canopy here and it looks like it's really good. Let's put the camera on here. Look how tiny this camera is. Nano light camera. This thing actually performs very well from some of the footage that I've seen. And they went with a smaller, a much smaller screw on this. The one that comes with the camera is just too short. And this is not a very common size. It's so tiny. So here's my canopy, here's the front right here. We're gonna install the camera into the canopy first and then try to attach the MIPI cable to it afterwards. The one's in. The other one did line up, so there you go. That's how it works, right? Put it in there. All right. It's there, you can see it through. I want to cut this. Do I wanna cut this? What's the point, right? All right, MIPI cable time. All right, we have it attached. Let's see if I can get this thing to fit properly now. All right, look how we caught that one as well. And then we just have the two side ones. All right. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I don't know if it's gonna work or not. There it is, there's the Tiny Hawk 3 <laughs> HD Zero. We need to put the props on and we should be good. We're doing a props in configuration. And now I gotta decide if I wanna use the blue or red. The red stands out so nicely, but the blue is gonna change the whole look of this one. It's just like when you see a nice car and then you're like, oh, that's a regular car. You know, that's the hybrid version and they put blue or green on there. I think we're gonna go with blue and just see how it looks. So that's gonna be for this one right here since it's a props in. So we have all four props in the right configuration. Now we gotta press them on. Let's start with this one. Uh, 
All right, there it is. Tiny Hop 3 HD0 1S build. Let's weigh this thing with and without the battery. It's probably gonna be really chunky compared to what everyone's used to. 31 grams with the battery, 42, 44. All right, it's a chunky boy. Let's see if this thing flies. Um, yeah, I was gonna arm it. I'm not gonna arm it, I can't do it anymore. I don't have it calibrated yet, the uh, accelerometer. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if this VTX is powering up and I have an image in my goggles. Whew, let's plug this in and see what happens. Hopefully no smoke. All right, everything seems to work. Good image. All right, no smoke and I have telemetry. Wow, okay, I'm gonna go to beta flight, assign my switches. Um, I'm also gonna calibrate my accelerometer because um, I couldn't do it when I did the flash because it wasn't in the drone. I don't know what right side it was or what the orientation was. I'm also gonna check to see that my motors are spinning in the right direction. And if not, then just correct it, but that should be pretty quickly. Okay, so we're back at the computer. We have our Tiny Hawk 3 here, HD Zero Edition. Looks pretty good. We're just gonna plug this into beta flight and make sure all our switches, tabs, ports, everything is configured pretty well before our first flight. All right, let's head on to beta flight and we're just gonna confirm that everything is in the right position. Anyway, so all I have to do is just change the degrees right here. Since I mounted the flight controller 180 degrees, I would just have to change it right here, 180 degrees roll. So now it's showing the right orientation. And as you can see, it's showing correct up, down, left, and right. As far as the ports, that looks all good. We have smart audio. And as you saw, I had one of the pads on the flight control actually lift, and there's no way to solder it, as I said before, at the workbench. Thank goodness it was the RX pad. But seeing that I still have the TX pad on the flight controller, I should be able to still receive telemetry. And I do have the Meteor 75 uh, configuration on this. It is, it is a beta FPV flight controller. So we're gonna run with that for now. And then later on, we might switch it up to another one. And because I had the configuration, it knew it was an SPI receiver, Express LRS. You can choose whatever you want, obviously, if you have a different board on there. So that all matches. And here's the thing, the modes, and it's all good. So we have AUX1 for ARM. That's set. Flight, mode Flight modes Flight mode are accra. set. And I have the beeper in this one. That looks good. And then flip over crash is this one. So everything should be good here. Motors, now I'm using a prop in configuration here, which makes sense. So they're all spinning on the inside. I did test them and they're all working. So no big deal there. Okay, that's a gyro. I'm just wondering what's going on here. OSD, that's the same as any other. I have all my telemetry on here. Now for the VTX, I did go to the presets on here and you can do it the old fashioned way using the command, the CLI. I just went to the presets, choose one for the whoop light or the whoop VTX. And it gave me all the stuff I needed, including my VTX table and everything is in here. Pretty cool. Even the power output 25 and 200. So this is all good. Cool guys. This is all done. Let's see if I can fly it. Uh, let's do it in angle mode first. Put my fan off so it doesn't get influenced. And we're recording here, so. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Hopefully I can get it steady here. You know what, it's not bad. I thought it was, it is drifting to the right. Not bad. There is a little bit of noise I can hear from the propellers. I don't know if it's... Eh, we'll see. All right, let's try that with the goggles. Put this puppy on. Okay, hopefully this works. There I am, there it is. We're in angle mode, obviously. Let's 
Not bad, I need to trim this some more. Woo -wee. Not bad. A little bit too much up tilt on this. All right, we crashed in the couch. All right, so let's unplug this thing. This, uh, yeah, it got shifted a little bit. That's what happened. Okay, I was like, why is the camera angle so high? The camera in here is so small, so tiny that um, I can see a halo, I can see the ring around this little angle tilt here. Now I've seen some other guys just remove this little canopy top and just mount the camera straight to this top piece here, the canopy. But I wanted to look official. I wanted to look like a, a traditional, you know, Tiny Hawk 3. So far, so good. That's in the room. So I want to fly this outdoors and I want to fly this also downstairs in other faraway areas and see how this thing here performs. But so far, guys, so good. I got really, really lucky with the OSD on here. It's still showing telemetry. But yeah, because I messed up on the pad here, um, there is still being TX sent from the flight controller going to the RX on the VTX, so I can still receive it. So I don't know how it's supposed to communicate back. I don't know if there's any crucial information leaving the VTX going to the flight controller, but uh, that works. I haven't tried out smart audio, but ideally that should work as well. Okay, so the Tiny Hawk 3 HD01 is built. Did a pretty decent job, guys. So in our next video, we're gonna go outside, fly this thing around, probably fly it indoors in some other areas and see how well it performs, see if we need to do some tweaks to the tune, maybe change some stuff on there, maybe try a different tune and see how this one here performs, see the battery life. So it's super decent, not too heavy. I think we saw 30 to 31 grams without the battery. So not a bad build considering we're using all off the shelf parts and then just putting this thing together flew okay so thanks for sticking around this long and i will see you in the next video peace